Okay, now we're going to talk about mouthpiece placement, the embouchure and how to form the embouchure, and then uh, what we must do to actually produce a sound on a brass instrument, specifically the horn, which is buzzing. Um, we've talked about air, so we have to have that really good fuel that we talked about behind the, the embouchure and the mouthpiece placement to get a really good buzz. So the first thing that we have to do is figure out where on the face the mouthpiece goes. Um, I have my mouthpiece here. Traditionally and most successfully, the mouthpiece fits on the upper lip two-thirds, the lower lip one-third. Um, that's a pretty good ratio that works for almost all horn students. So I'm going to put my mouthpiece on my mouth where it belongs. Right there, nice and high. Um, a couple of ways that you can get students to really find that spot that have, is quite successful is to bring the mouthpiece from above down onto the lip. Now we haven't talked about the shape of the lip yet. Right now we're just trying to figure out where on the lip it goes. Now let's talk about what the lip should look like behind the mouthpiece. A really good way to get, uh, there's actually a few really good ways to get um, the lips in the right shape for this. One is to simply say the syllable mmm. So if I'm saying mmm, puh, follow the M with a P, M, puh. That gets me into a horn embouchure. It's pretty simple and straightforward. Um, if we wanted to take that one step forward and get the tongue involved so that we have a little bit more energy behind the buzz, we can say M, puh, M, puh. And the way that I describe that is very similar to spitting a seed. So if I had a seed in my mouth, watermelon seed, something like that, and I'm trying to get it off the tip of my tongue. Now, a buzz is simply the extension of all of those things working together with the fuel, the air behind it. Okay, now we have to put the mouthpiece on that. So these are a couple of things that all have to work together simultaneously uh, that can be practiced separately and then put together. I'm going to go M behind the mouthpiece. So first I'm going to take my mouthpiece, place it on my lip, two-thirds upper lip, one-third lower. I'm going to breathe in my really good inhalation. And I'm going to buzz through the mouthpiece. Very simple. Now there are a lot of problems that, come, that can come from that. Um, one could be that the mouthpiece is too high or too low. Actually, in my experience, the number one problem for mouthpiece placement for the French horn comes from the mouthpiece too low. Um, a lot of times students will be switched from trumpet to horn. That seems to be one of the more common switches. Uh, young programs where there are a lot of kids on trumpet, band director will say, hey, let's, let's try you on the French horn. Maybe you'd like that. Or students will express an interest in playing something else. Also flute uh, or win uh, woodwinds, the other students that don't have experience on the French horn. The one thing to remember is that the French horn embouchure is not like the other brass instrument embouchures. It is especially trumpet. Trumpet is very half and half, a lot lower on the lip than the horn. The horn must be very high compared to that. So when you move students from any instrument, pretend like you're starting over from scratch and come at it from a whole new perspective of two-thirds upper, one-third lower. If it's too low, your students will uh, have a reduction in range. I mean, they're not going to be able to play high very well. They're not going to be able to play low very well. The tone will often sound very thin um, because we need more of that upper lip and the mouthpiece to get a good vibration. So those are a couple of things to keep in mind when you're placing uh, the mouthpiece on the mouthpiece. Another really good suggestion would be to actually place the mouthpiece yourself. If I have a student um, who needs an embouchure change or is a younger student starting out in horn, I will take the mouthpiece, have them place the M P and hold it, and I will actually place the mouthpiece on the mouth for them and say, this is ideally textbook where your mouthpiece ought to go. Making a few adjustments for teeth or um, you know, other variations, everybody has a different face. But in essence, placing it for them will help them create that memory, muscle memory of, okay, this is where I remember the teacher putting it, um, then that's what I'm going to try to recreate. I even have students go to the bathroom and practice, stand in front of the mirror so that they can see or get a, a small mirror on the music stand 
so that they can see that they're placing it and they're not relying just on touch and feel but also okay does this look like what I remember uh, my band director showing me uh. other common problems that you might have in young players um, of course we remember that the, the, the big problem um, behind weak sound um, thin sound unsupported sound is air assuming that air is really good and strong other specific mouthpiece problems uh, besides it being too low I, I can't say that I've ever seen a student with it too high but it can happen um, off to the side a little bit not so much a common problem mostly is too much pressure and the biggest reason behind students using too much pressure are undeveloped corners and not using enough support here and instead using truly their physical strength from the arm just to hold the thing on there uh, so what you might consider really focusing on is keeping the, the chin flat much like many of the other instruments that focus on a flat chin the horn also has a nice supported embouchure and a flat chin so if I keep that chin nice and flat I have a M P. you can see a really nice diamond shape embouchure <laughs> and my range is good, my tone is nice and open because the chin is down and if I have good air, everything should work pretty well.